in your heart. Can you imagine Moses, a three-year-old baby, was put in a river, a river which we do not know what is in there. There will be a fish, crocodiles in there, but there is danger for this baby. And I'm curious for other people, how many of you here are either adopted or had adopted a child in their lives, in their family? Or there is this missing part in your family because of that adoption. <clears throat> to adopt a child means someone has to give a child. Maybe you've not given up for adoption, but I'm sure that most everyone here has some experience in giving up things in their lives. Someone has said, Mothers begin saying goodbye to their children from the moment that they born that baby. That mother carrying the child in her womb for nine months, that it came to a point that she's already in emergency room, the mother is uh, delivering, is that the right word? Then the baby came up. That's the time when the relationship of mother to her child was being separated. But still, that mother has a special role in raising that child. Some, it's likely all of us, know the pain of giving up. Letting go of someone or something precious to you. It's either your relationship, your job, your dreams, your plans in your life, these friends are things that hinder allowing us or things that we can be letting go. <clears throat> and during this time, life comes with the pain of losses, of giving up and letting go, and we are rarely ready to let go. Now, in the life of a woman of influence, Jochebed, which is Moses' mother. Sorry, because uh, I got sick last night, so you will hear me either coughing or sneezing later. But uh, I entitled my sermon, the message, Let Go and Let God. Don't let your emotion to hinder your relationship with your God. Now, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 1, it says, A man from the household of Levi married a woman who was a descendant of Levi. And in Exodus 6, verse 20, Amram married his father's sister, Jochebed, and she, be, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. So now, there is this Hebrew, Levite, Amram and Jochebed get married. You know, the meaning of the name Jochebed it means God's glory or honor of God. From that name, friends, I believe that in her life, God has a purpose. Why He has brought in this world. How the Lord can transform our lives through that mother and through her son. This couple has great faith. In Hebrews 11:23 it says, "By faith they hid Moses." During that time, Pharaoh wants to kill all the men. Why? Because during that time, numbers of men are growing. And if their numbers spread more abundantly, there's a tendency that they will conquer Egypt. And they don't want to let that happen. So they have a purpose to kill all the gentlemen and to retain all the female. Because the female, they can make it a slaves, they can let it work in their house. And they saw life through the eyes of faith. Now, what is the definition of faith, friends? 
Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Jochebed and Amram had their faith that their son will survive because God had a purpose in that child. Certainly, faith in God that he exists, that he made a covenant with Abraham that set them apart as a chosen people. They had faith that God had promises that through them, Abraham, that they would be a nation, a people with land in their land. Now, let's try to look in Exodus 2, 1 to 2. Let's go back again there. A man from the household of Levi married a woman who was a descendant of Levi. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a healthy child, she hid him for three months. Friends, the, the scenario is this. Baby Moses, people around him, likes to kill him. Now, how can you securely keep a child without letting other people hear him cry? Maybe Jochebed always carrying Moses. Every time that she, he cries, he will take Moses and uh, cuddle it. Or maybe when Moses is crying, Miriam is there letting his brother to go back to sleep. It's a crucial time in their time. It's a crucial situation that they have to secure Moses in order for him not to be killed. And still, it's by faith that they were able to hit Moses because they saw the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's addict. They've seen in the child that he is beautiful, it's goodly. There is something in the child that is relevant for their future. He is not just an ordinary child. The Hebrew word is fine, or meaning tov, means good and beautiful. Moses is a beautiful child. Moses is a good child. This word conveys the possibility that Jochebed said something was special about this baby. Now, the plan of the midwives failed. What followed in that is the Pharaoh instructed those people who will kill that all the babies will be thrown in the Nile River, to be drawn in the Nile River. Can you imagine trying to hide a newborn baby? Again, I'd like to ask that. People are searching for Moses, for all the babies. But during that time, I don't know how they tried to hit Moses. Maybe when Moses is crying, uh, Jochebed is closing his mouth, but it's hard for, him, for her. It's her baby. But in Hebrews 11.23, they were not afraid of the king's ethic. That time, friends, is a big challenge once again for not only for Jochebed, but even for Amram, for Aaron, for Miriam, because when, they, when people, the soldiers of Egypt, found out that they're trying to hid baby in their house, they will be all killed. Maybe they will steal baby Moses, and they will kill Jochebed, they will kill Amram, they will kill Mos uh, Miriam and Aaron. But the Lord didn't allow that to happen in their lives. But there came a day when she knew she couldn't hide him any longer, and he had to let him go. Still, friends, in our lives, there are things that we are keeping in our lives that it's hard for us to let go. But in this situation, Jochebed let go of Moses. And what is the mode Jochebed used to let go of Moses? He used the basket. In Exodus chapter 2, 3 to 4, it says, But when she was no longer able to hide him,
She took a papyrus paper basket for him and sealed it with beauty men and pitch. It's like sealing the basket. She put the child in it and set it among the reeds along the edge of the Nile River. Or in other terms, the reed means bushes. And his sister stationed herself at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Now, baby Moses is in the basket covered with, it's not plastic, but the word is uh, sealed with beauty men and pitch. Or in King James Version, it's other term. Then Jochebed put that in the water. Now, if you are there, if you are the mother of Moses, baby Moses, what can you feel, friends? Putting your baby on the river, then in a little while, you're about to say, but I cannot do it. It's hard for me to let go of my baby. But Miriam is there, mommy, let go of him, let go of him. Do you think that is the scenario? But, friends, Jochebed trusted in God. Jochebed trusted in God. When, when he put, she put that baby on the river, he gave her life and trusted to God that Moses will be saved. Now, I'd like to mention Miriam here. Miriam, she's not a spy, but she's looking closely where would baby Moses would go. Closely, she's observing if Moses, baby Moses will stuck on the bushes, maybe she will, pu- she will push it so, so she can continue traveling. Then, up to that time that she safely arrived on the place where King uh, Pharaoh's daughter is bathing, Miriam stopped and she said, I will not let go. I will not let my eyes be distracted. I'll still focus on baby Moses. But same with us, friends. Just like Miriam, we need to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. How closely she is, she was looking to baby Moses. And during that time, they let God and trust God. And what happened next is one of the most exciting things. In verse 5 in Exodus chapter 2, it says, Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself by the Nile. While her attendants were walking along the river, and she saw the basket among the reeds, she sent one of her attendants and took it. Then, when the attendant opened the basket, maybe baby Moses cried aloud, cried aloud, looking for her mother, and Pharaoh's daughter felt compassion. She felt compassion. Remember, Pharaoh's daughter, she's still part of that family who would like to kill all the babies during that time, baby boy in that time. But Pharaoh's daughter felt compassion to baby Moses. Then his sister, Miriam, said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get a nursing woman for you from the Hebrews so that she may nurse the child for you? So now Miriam is there. She saw that baby Moses was already safe in the hands, in the arms of Pharaoh's daughter. Then there she is, standing, presenting herself. Ma'am, I volunteer. I will find someone who can nurse that baby. And who do you think Miriam look for? It's Jochebed. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes, do so. So the young girl went and got the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse him for me, and I will pay you your wages. Friends, 
remember, Pharaoh's daughter is part of that, uh, that family who would like to kill all the babies. But during this time, Pharaoh's daughter is giving that baby back to her original mother. Not only that, she's giving wages, paying for all the efforts in taking care of baby Moses. How about for others? For example, you have given your child to someone who is in need of help. Then later on, that person returns it back to you and said, take good care of that child and I'll pay you. Will you be happy? You have your child, still you're earning something, right? But it, that's not in the mind of Jochebed. So the woman took the child and nursed him. It says on Daughters of God, page 193, paragraph 2, the child's first teacher is the mother. The first teacher of the mother, of the child is the mother. During the period of greatest susceptibility and most rapid development, his education is to a great degree in her hands. Meaning, friends, mothers who are here right now, the faculty, or maybe mothers-to-be, you have a special role in training your child. You have a special role. To her first is given opportunity to mold the character for good or for bad. Even during the time of your conception, through the songs that you are singing, that child is reacting. Sabi nila, sinisipa daw yun siya mo habang kumakanta ka. Depende siguro sa kanta. But that time, friends, it's very important for that child to have your attention given to, to him or her. It says in Adventist Psalm, page 390, in paragraph 1, Every mother is a teacher, and every mother should be a learner in the school of Christ, that they may know how to teach, that she may give the right mood, the right form of character to her children. Friends, in the school of Christ, you will learn a lot of things. Not just focusing on your studies, not just focusing on how to be a keeper in the house, but in there, you will learn to have a complete relationship with God. And a mother is the one human being who unselfishly gives herself to her children time and time again without asking for anything in return. I can, I can testify with these friends. I can see that in my life, my mother, every time that I go home to our house, every time, even it's late, she always asks me, Nak, have you eaten your dinner? Have you eaten your lunch? Have you eaten your breakfast? But still, I answered, yes, but I don't have an appetite to eat because I'm tired. But this mother, my mother, keep on cooking, cooking, cooking for me, even though I'm not eating the food that she prepared for me. And there are times that when you are hungry, the last portion of your mother will be shared to you. I don't know in your family friends, maybe some of you are rich, maybe some are poor, but still, we have these factors in our life that the mother would like to express her care to you by giving all the shares, all of her time for you. In the age of... Uh, of two, child's brain is 75% developed and 90% in the age of four. What does this mean? Meaning, from age two to four, friends, that's a critical stage in the child's life that you need to take in good care of. All the things, all the words that he can or she can hear has an influence whether for good or for bad. You know, during this age, three or th two to four, they're always asking, why, why, why? And if you answered wrong things, that child may, can behold that your, your answer. For example, my pamangkin, my niece. Every time that I share Bible verses to him, he always asks me, why, why is this story is like this? Why? There's always why in her, in her words. 
And in Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 95, the home and school were one. So meaning, when the child is with you, that is, as well, his or her home, your his school. So every detail that you're sharing to that child, there's an importance in his development. In the place of strangers' lips, the loving hearts of the father and mother were to give instruction to their children. But most of the mother today, this is, I don't know if you belong to this, most of the mother today, since they are busy working, since they are busy maybe studying, in the early stage of the life of children, they will ask for a uh, companion in their house, they will ask for yaya, then not only that, the yaya will bring the child to school, three years old, bring to school, or four years old, bring to school, then let the teacher be her mother. And all the things that the teacher is sharing, the child is uh, receiving this, and when the child go home, your mother will ask, why you're like that? Where did you learn that? Now, the child may be wondering, why my mother is asking me like this? If she's the one, or if she's the one who brought me to school. Meaning, friends, you have to train your child properly while they are, they are still in, in your house. Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 95. Thoughts of God were associated with all the events of daily life in the home dwelling. All the events that has a relationship in the child. The mother is dealing with developing minds and characters working not alone for time but for eternity. Because friends, when you have trained that child in the way he should go, she will not, he will not depart from it. It has an effect on his or her future. Later on, we will see how it works through the life of Moses. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. During that time, 12 years nurturing Moses, Jacob had spent time sharing God's goodness to Moses. She shared Isaac. Jacob, these people whom one of their ancestors was being taught as well to Moses. And Moses, during that time, maybe Jacob had trained him, you should be standing straight because after several years, you will be facing rulers in Egypt. And not only that, Moses learned from those lessons. And Pharaoh's daughter named Moses, named him Moses, saying, because I drew him from the water. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, friends, it says, Train up a child in a way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Some of the mothers today, they have seen their child growing. And every time this child grows, she's telling in herself probably, how can I share more of my time to this child? This child will enter elementary, high school, college. And after college, maybe he will find someone to be with in the, as a family as well. They will get married, they will have their children, and only a few times he can spend it with me. But still, Jochebed trusted in God. Mothers and mothers-to-be, listen up. Today, if you have a son or daughter living with you or not in you, with you, perhaps they are not attending church, perhaps they are active in church, but still, you need to look and keep your eyes on them. God doesn't give up on them. He sent angels after them. 
I believe that you students, even though you are far away from your mother, maybe the mother, your mother, you don't know what you're doing right now. But still, your mother is there praying for you, praying that you will be safe, praying that you will be involved in the ministry, praying that you will be involved and active in school, praying that you will use your money wisely every time that she gave you your allowance, use, using your time wisely. Those are probably the mother's prayer. I don't know. I didn't hear, heard my mother praying for me, but maybe out there, I believe she's praying for me. You know, before I came here, studying, standing before you, I called my mom. And she said, Nak, have you eaten your lunch? Still, she asked that question. I said, yes. And I go, Ma, I'm a little bit sick. And she said, I wish I were, I'm there, taking good care of you. And I said, Mom, I'm already big. I can handle myself. But right now, I can say to myself, Lord, I still miss my mother. Now, Moses was brought back to her, his another mother, other mother, the Pharaoh's daughter. And she stayed, he stayed in Egypt for 40 years. There, he learned a lot of things. In Egypt, in the school of Egypt, Moses received the highest civil and military training of great personal attractions, noble in form, and stature of cultivated mind, and princely bearing, and renowned as a military leader. He became nation's pride. That is how Moses tra got trained in Egypt. His life in there, though surrounded by wicked parties, maybe we, friends that is always drinking alcohol, friends maybe who are, is, there is no cigarette that time, right? Friends who is doing bad things. Women who is wearing transparent clothing. But enough, the learning that she learned, he learned from his mother is enough for him to stand in the midst of the Egyptians. Pharaoh will summon you and say, no, sorry for that. You know, friends, Moses, after being trained in Egypt, the Lord brought him to the wilderness. The Lord brought him to the wilderness. And in wilderness, he spent 40 years of his life. And not just walking there in the wilderness, but he became a shepherd. He became a shepherd. From that time, 40 years, literal years, he became a shepherd. And after 40 years, he will become God's shepherd for the Israelites. He will become God's shepherd in Israelites. Now in Genesis 46, verse 33 and 34, it's during Joseph's time, Again, what is the occupation of Moses in, in wilderness? He is a shepherd. Now, in Genesis chapter 46, verse 33 and 34, it says, Pharaoh will summon you and say, What is your occupation? Tell him, your servants have taken care of cattle from our youth until now. Both we our fathers, so that you may live in the Gosh land of Goshen, for every care of sheep is disgusting to the Egyptians. Now, friends, I would like to emphasize this, that Moses, living in the wilderness for 40 years, carrying, leading all the sheep there, will use by God to be a shepherd of Israelites. But from this verse, friends, Shepherd, in the time of, for the Egyptian, this is the least occupations that they can have. 
they are disgusted for all the shepherds. But my dear friends, Moses, who is a shepherd, was used by God to let Israelites to come out in the bondage of Egypt. There is something in Moses. There is something in Moses that Jochebed saw. That's why she tried to hid Moses from that danger. And not only that, friends, going back to this quotation, many of us here in this university, maybe probably you'd like to be having a princely bearing, to be renowned as a military, military leader, to become nation's pride, most of us are chasing these things. We'd like to chase the, that award. We'd like to chase to be number one in your academics. We'd like to chase these things. But God likes us to behold humble things for our lives. God desires us, for us many times, to take the lowest responsibilities and many complaints that, ah, I'm not great as that guy. I'm not good as him. What the Lord has given you, the Lord knows what is best for you, friends. And if the Lord has given you tasks, no matter how small it is, no matter how humble it is, you have to take it wholeheartedly because God is really preparing you for something. Just like Moses, when the Lord called him in the wilderness, when the Lord taught him how to be shepherd, the Lord is using Moses. The Lord is putting Moses in a responsibility from shepherd now to be a leader, to be someone who will allow Israelites to come out in Egypt. Again, don't rely on your reading books, friends. Sit, sitting at the feet of our professors. Some of us spending more time in our books, listening to our professors, but friends, just like Moses, he learned how to sit in the feet of Jesus, who is our great shepherd. And he really wants you. He, re he really prepares you like Moses, and not just draw close to God, but learn how to draw others closer to God. There in wilderness, he's not just leading one ship. He's leading hundreds, thousands of sheep. Moses didn't just become a shepherd for the sheep. He had to become shepherd for Israel. The reason why God is humbling you, friends, the reason why God is creating you that God-likeness because He wants you then who was saved by God to become agent of salvation. Now, during that experience in the desert, you know, the desert, the word desert means to speak, to speak. For 40 years, scores turned him into a seasoned man of God, Moses. He made ready for the leadership position that God has chosen. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9 to 10, it says, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste holding wilderness. He led him about 